Hi, Fred Dawson here with Screenplays. We're in Amsterdam at IBC and we have an opportunity to talk with Arno Perrier who is the Vice President of Solutions Marketing at Invivio. Um, thanks so much for taking time to speak with us, Arno. Thanks for having me, Fred. Um, obviously, we're, we're, we've come to a moment in the evolution of uh, pay TV and of everything having to do with getting content out to every screen where uh, you, th this is what you were made for, right? Um, it, so the question I guess now is uh, all of a sudden operators everywhere realize that multi-screen is mainstream. It's not over on the side as a little adjunct to uh, making services a little more appealing. They've got to do it on, in a big way and all of a sudden it is truly a nightmare from a cost standpoint, from an architectural, how do you, how do you get all this done? Uh, what are you seeing as to how that's getting resolved and, and, and what, what are the solution points that some people are acting on with your uh, portfolio? Yeah, that's exactly right. It's a, it's a pivotal, pivotal moment for us in, in the industry because, uh, you know, um, everybody's starting to really embrace um, the software convergent uh, capabilities of, uh, of our solutions, right? Um, as you know, we can, uh, we can uh, run any codec on an off-the-shelf Intel-based architecture in the data center, right? So we can distribute um, MPEG-2 even at optimized bandwidth to reclaim, uh, you know, capacity uh, from, from legacy services to reallocate to new services. Uh, we can run H.264, right, in VBR for satellite services, in CBR for IPTV, um, and most recently HEVC uh, to reduce bandwidth on the, on the new multi-screen services or on new VOD services. And we're all doing this from a single piece of software, our Muse transcoding software in the data center, right? Um, and once you implement that, no longer do you depend as an operator on, uh, on dedicated hardware head-ends, right, mm -hmm. or siloed hardware head-ends, right, um, but also you're able to, to completely consolidate that, right, in no one, one operation, right, so your costs, um, both in terms of capex, rack, rack space, power savings, um, and also opex, um, go way down all of a sudden, right, to... One, one of the obviously pushbacks uh, around that scenario is, uh, well, okay, but we're used to doing pay TV at the highest possible level with uh, encoders that were designed specifically to get super high quality over the amount of bandwidth right. we have to allocate. Uh, how can we possibly now, you know, give that up in favor of sa saving some costs and, and running on uh, generic processors? That's a really good question, and the answer is that they don't have to give that up. As a matter of fact, we're able to enhance on the quality that they're used to getting on the hardware platforms, right? So, uh, of course, nobody would go away from best of breed, you know, quality of service, quality of experience for my pay subscribers is what's still most critical. Can't compromise on that. However, if we are able to show that we provide even better quality than what they have today on those hardware platforms, then it's a no-brainer, right? I'll give you an example. Uh, we, uh, we announced a um, partnership with Zon Multimedia, um, MSO multi-platform operator in Portugal uh, uh, recently. Um, they used our software solution for multi-screen, right? TV to iPads, uh, phones, etc., PCs, um, and they got used to to the to operating it and its reliability, even as a piece of software, right? Um, and at some point, they thought, so why uh, why uh, can't Envivio uh, power my H.264 headend for DTH, right? Uh, they also have a cable headend, as a matter of fact, uh, running old MPEG-2, so they also tested our MPEG-2 uh, Statmux technology versus their existing head-ends, whether it be from legacy vendors. And what they found was, uh, not only is it just as reliable, um, you know, running from the same software that runs the ABR uh, operation, but they're also able to squeeze in more channels or enhance the quality versus the, the hardware platforms. So they've actually made a transition where they're able to do all of those outputs around a single platform. That is correct. And, they, and in, in so doing, 
Um, how do they make that transition? I mean, did they just trash what they had, or is this incremental, in, like an MPEG-2, is this for additive stuff, or is this just put it all in one? No, I think it's easier for like uh, the, the likes of MPEG-2 because they're, you know, legacy services, uh, you know, more, in some cases it's even end of life equipment, you know, uh, they're going to run out of support after a while, they have to do something, make a decision. Either in, I invest in uh, a new, again, yet another hardware architecture that I'm going to have to throw out in three years, is that right. a smart choice? Or, you know, do I just buy a license from Invivio to turn that on on my existing uh, data center? I think it's a, the answer is really easy. So. Are you seeing, uh, say, MSOs in, in North America uh, moving in this direction, seeing the, the wisdom of doing this kind of thing? Yeah, so, uh, you know, we have obviously some success in Europe. I absolutely, we absolutely see uh, uh, this trend happening in, in, uh, in America, North America, and also in Asia, right? So it's just a, just a question of time. So, but there's really, really, uh, you know, pivotal moment now in industry towards, uh, towards the software on Intel infrastructure for converged architectures. And of course, what, what, one of the things that goes into making this a pivotal moment is the onset of HEVC, the next generation of, of MPEG encoding and, and compression. That's right. Uh, and, and here at this show, we've seen a lot of buzz around that. Uh, and, and, and I guess there, there are certain use scenarios that are coming in sooner than later, but from, from the standpoint of anybody operating in a legacy head-end situation, this has got to be a serious concern, because on the one hand, they want to get to the bandwidth savings that come with that. They got 4K, Ultra HD on the horizon. Right. Um, and yet, on the other hand, that means trading out, that means finding new hardware uh, to, to run that, unless they happen to be on generic uh, servers where they can implement software that could do that. Yeah. Is, is that in your mind a, a, a consideration that's entering into your customers thinking yes. as to whether it now is the time to make that transition to the converged head end we're talking about? It is very much so uh, because, you know, uh, just like they want to reduce cost for legacy services, they're worried about, you know, future proofing their system, right? This market is moving so fast now. New devices, you know, new TVs, smart TVs with 4K capability, uh, Samsung handsets, galaxies that have HEVC decoding capabilities, you know, uh, new graphics, new rich program guides. How do I, you know, address all this, right? It's very, uh, it's very scary. And you can, yeah, you can wait to buy um, another, you know, hardware-based uh, solution, which is not available today, by the way, right? Or you can say, yeah, I already have a solution in software. And uh, if I go with that, I can simply buy a license and turn on HEVC or transition to HEVC to save cost and turn on 4K um, in a few months if I need to, right? So you don't need to make a, a critical uh, the investment decision in new hardware or even delay delay uh, purchasing decisions or your ability to do that, right? There's just no hardware solution for 4K today anyway, right? Yeah. So. Now, of course, a, a, a lot of operators, and we, we're seeing, I think, a little more excitement around 4K here than, than I've seen in the past year uh, at, at certainly some of the shows in North America. Um, and I, I think that in North America there's still a certain amount of uh, amongst the operators skepticism or uncertainty about how important 4k is to their future um, and and now we're we're seeing the onset of 10-bit as opposed to 8-bit encoding mm -hmm. we're, we're seeing uh, built into the standard uh, 60 frame per second not just 30 frame per second uh, capabilities all of which will contribute to intensifying and improving the quality um, I guess one of the things that that gets ignored in a lot of the discussion is, is okay it this is for high value quality picture for very big screens and only so many people are going to have those screens but then there's this whole element of 4k which opens up all this real estate for doing all these things and and to your mention of, of what Samsung is doing to, to to give you more space and more flexibility to to, to do things and so I, I guess my question to you is do you think that there's there's going to be 
like a faster than some people may envision adaptation to 4K in the marketplace that they got to be prepared for sooner than later? Yeah, so uh, what we see in the market is, uh, is definitely a trend that's um, happening faster on a faster ramp than we've seen, you know, let's say uh, six, seven years ago when HD services first came to market. Um, the first reason is that you there is no dependency on on you know necessarily on brand new CPEs or set top boxes to be able to do that right. There's an install base of whether it's new TVs or or, or smart devices that are capable of doing that uh -huh. with with software uh, decoders maybe with some hardware assist but it's there right. So um, as a content owner or as an operator, you have many more options to go to market and a lot faster with that. And the screen size, I mean, the TVs are, you know, the panels, the panel cost always comes, you know, way down. It's coming down faster than, than we've ever seen, right? So yeah. you can already buy a Chinese 4K TV for $2,000, right? So you'll expect that, the, you know, the brand names are going to uh -huh. be, you know, half the cost that it is today in, in, in four months, right? So. But what what's uh, what I think is going to happen, and the opportunity for for um, for internet plays, the likes of Netflix or Hulu, is really to differentiate versus the the traditional operators and and be first to market with uh, with uh, with a service like this. So that suddenly gets people's attention, uh, whether whatever they're speculating on as to the receptivity or whatever, all of a sudden it's available over the top. Um, it's something to pay attention to. That's right. I mean, the technology is here, right? I mean, uh, you, uh, you look at our, uh, our 4K uh, video on the big screen here, uh, you know, this is available today. You can stream a movie at 12 megabits on, a, on the biggest 4, 4K screen, right? So you don't need huge broadband speeds, right, you know, right. to be able to do that, right? And, and to that point, uh, you're there with that. I mean, you, uh, how close are you to being able to support one of those OTT people that wants to deliver that uh, 4K out into the marketplace? Yeah, we're there today. Our, you know, our Muse On Demand software transcoder uh, can, uh, can provide that right now. Uh, at, at really really good quality, very compelling uh, you know level of sharpness, you know at the bandwidth that you know uh, a cable operator takes to, to distribute uh, an HD signal today, right? Yeah. 12 megabits. Think about it. This is the this is the cable rate for for HD MPEG2, right? So and HEVC you know makes that possible, and we're really really happy with the progress we made on the HEVC codec in the last few months, right? Uh, for on-demand, uh, we see some in the neighborhood of 30 to 40 percent gains versus H.264 already. Um, for for live linear encoding, we're already at about 25 to 30 percent gains uh, versus uh, versus H.264. So the savings are there, um, and also quality gains. That's I think that's one of the attractive aspects of HEVC. People talk all the time about lower bandwidth, you know, more channels. But what we've noticed is that you actually get a better user experience. You, you do get uh, sharper pictures, more detail, just because of the, the characteristics of the codec, right? Details that you, know, you were not necessarily able to see with, H, with H.264, even on HD uh, mm -hmm. video. Mm -hmm. So we're excited. It's going way faster than, than we, we anticipated. The ramp is faster than we saw for H.264.